last week on the AP Show, we talked about the pollution doubleheader, but we're not done. We still have more winners to talk to, and we're still reveling in some great racing. Today, we'll be talking with singles winner from down under, Ozzy Maxwell, as well as Production Twins winners Ryan Varnes and the 2019 AFT Production Twins champ, Corey Texter. This is the AFT Show, presented this week to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Welcome to the AFT Show. I'm Scotty Dubler, the voice of American Flat Track, the co-host of the podcast Off the Groove. Well, two weeks ago, we had our doubleheader at Volusia Speedway Park, and we kicked off the season finally after about a 300-day delay, and it was so good to be back on the racetrack. Uh, if you missed any of the action, you can go back to Track Pass on NBC Gold via the web browser or download the NBC Gold app onto your, your phone or wherever you watch anything and you can re-watch it over and over again and you can always watch it on demand and you can go back and watch it on track pass for future live aft events today on the show we have our singles winner from friday night the rider from down under maxwell he got his first ever pole and his first ever victory in american flat track also we have the production twins winners both of them the first one from friday night which is ryan barnes and our defending champ Corey Texter rocking that big number one plate. He took the win on Saturday night. Last week, we chatted with Jared Meese. Meese took a, uh, a victory on both nights, a little bit controversial there on Friday night. We heard from him and exactly what happened there in his point of view on exactly what happened Friday night early on in that, in that first main event. There's a little bit of contact between him and Jeffrey Carver. Tonight, we're going to catch up with Jeffrey Carver Jr. They call him the wizard via Skype. Let's bring him in now. Hey, Jeffrey, thanks for stopping by the AFT show. Hey, thanks, Scotty. Let's talk about Volusia. Friday night, you were on rails, and we got going. You start in the front row. Early on, there's a little bit of an incident. Walk us through from your point of view. Um, well, you know, that's a long – it was going to be a long main event. I wasn't sure how everybody was going to pace pace out. Um, I, had a, I actually rode a different bike in the main event that hadn't been rode all weekend. And uh, so I was a little timid right off the bat, definitely with the long laps and stuff. But, uh, man, I don't know. I just very much feel like, um, first off, you know, I think it's racing incident, realistically. Now, does that mean that it could be avoided or could have went a little differently? Yeah, but, I mean, just, you know, to get be honest up front, I know a lot of people have been asking me about it. I just feel like, you know, it's a pretty much a racing incident. You know, I know that... Um, you know, you can make a pass and you can give somebody some room to get back in line. And I just feel like, um, you know, you can also run somebody to the top of the groove, which we've all done it. That's racing, you know. So it is what it is. You know, I kind of I heard him coming in underneath me. I tried getting up just a little bit to the edge of the groove. Hopefully I could sneak back in underneath him and he wasn't giving me no extra real estate. So um, just the way it goes, you know, I mean, to win a national, that's what everybody's out there to do. So um you know people make moves i know um you know brad got into uh stevie bonzi a few years ago at at the mile and as you could tell it was not intentional we're just i think what it also shows is how close and how um experienced a lot of the riders are and how calculated our line choices are you know it's like running in and grabbing a rut at 20 miles an hour is pretty badass you know but to hit a you know foot mark that we're pretty much it and sometimes you know we're going after even something smaller than that at you know top speed 95 miles an hour so um yeah i was really happy the way that the season started you know we were qualifying right up front you know did good in the semi put myself in good contentions you know i think that showed a lot of the you know fans all the people from happy trails racing that have been helping support me that their money's going to something that i'm putting in my efforts and uh you know, the rest of the team and also, you know, with all the uh, gossip over the winter about me not racing and uh, just like to come out and prove to myself and everybody else that this is what we're doing. And, um, yeah, I'm happy with the way the season started, really. Are there any hard feelings between you and Jared? Oh, no, I don't know. It is what it is. Um, it's racing. I mean, that's just the way it goes. Um I know definitely he wasn't trying to take me out. We've raced each other really clean. We've definitely bumped each other. Um, but it just all is what it is. Do I have a little bit of hurt feelings we towards some of it? Yeah, I do. But I think that's natural. I think anybody is. Uh, I'm not out trying to stir the pot on any of it. You know, we just kind of go 
go do our thing. You know, we get rates in, we're going to be clean. We're going to be hard. That's just the way I've learned. And I'll always ride that way. What did he say to you on after the after they threw the red flag when he pulled up? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> listening to him. I just like I know he's gonna come try and do his. Oh, I'm sorry. Da 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 da. Yeah. Okay. I get it. It's whatever. Will there be a payback in the future? Uh, I'm sure everybody's been asking me that. Everybody. I know a lot of people want it to be, but you know, like I always tell people, it's calculated risk on what we do. Do I want to make any more of a risk to hurt somebody else or hurt myself in a situation? You know, I mean, no, not at all. Um, do we ride? Do everybody, you know, do, do people in cage fighting fight people a little bit harder than some other people? Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Cool, man. Well, we, we had me on last weekend. We heard his side of the story. We wanted you to stop by. We want to hear your side of the story. I, I, was, I was glad to see you running fast. You had the speed and good luck in the 2020 season. Thanks. I appreciate it, Scotty. Thanks for all the fans out there watching and tuning in and everybody helping out the uh, Happy Trails Racing. goes a long way. That's Jeffrey Carver. We're going to get a word from our sponsor, E3 Spark Plugs. We'll be right back. Powering the winners of America's original extreme sport. E3 Diamond Fire technology maximizes the fuel burn for better fuel efficiency and more power. E3 Spark Plugs. What are you running? Welcome back to the AFT Show. Last week, we had the winner of day number two in the singles class. It was Dallas Daniels. But this week, we got the rider from Australia. Let's bring him in now. The first race, the first win of the season. It is the rider from Australia, Max Whale. Hey, Max. Thanks for stopping by the AFT Show. Hey, Scotty. How's it going? It's great. Congratulations on your first victory with American Flat Track. No, thank you very much. It was, it was, uh, it was pretty special. It was uh, Sort of hard to believe at first, really, but, uh, but when it sunk in, it was awesome. Your first pole was earlier that day. You sat on the pole for the main event, and you went out there and you won your main event. Tell, tell us about the day. How did, how did it happen? How did it go down for you? Yeah, so in, like uh, straight away from the start, practice, uh, qualifying. I think I was second in every practice and qualifying. I felt like uh, awesome all day. I um, had first pick, uh, well, yeah, first pick for my semi. Went outside and yeah, just got a really good start. And I think I led the semi start to finish. Uh, just yeah, it was yeah, it went perfectly really. And then uh, the main event, I had a not so good start. I think I was like fourth or fifth or something. But um, yeah, it got round him in about. I went up to the lead in about six laps. But then uh, yeah, they they were uh, really close to like the first like ten laps when I passed. And then uh, then uh, sort of like like uh, about twenty uh, fifteen laps in, twenty laps in, I. Uh, I started gapping them out again, but yeah, no, it was, it was, it was sweet. It was really cool. It was a lot longer race because of the timed events. You guys went 25 laps, I believe. It, is that hard for you? Were you thinking about other things, or you just focused on lap by lap and, and, and what's in front of you? Yeah, um, I don't mind the longer race. Like I, I feel like a, like I was, I wasn't tired. I was, I was, uh, I was good the whole race, but. Uh, Man, when you're leading for like 20 laps, that race went forever. It just kept mm -hmm. like lap. I'm like, come on, when am I gonna see two laps to go? <laughs> Sometime soon. But yeah, that's no, good. So when you got done, did you call Australia? Did you talk to your family? Yeah, uh, pretty straight away. Dad called, and yeah, it was pretty cool. He was he was pumped. Mum and dad, and uh, yeah, it was awesome. I just wish they were here. That would have been sweet, but it's cool still. Maybe they'll be here for the next one. I don't know. Do they? They don't get to come back until next year, right? Yeah, um, it's going to be tough. Um, I don't think he's going to make it in time this year, but hopefully uh, next year or, you know, whenever. But, yeah, I don't think this year if uh, mum and dad, they would be back, which sucks, but, yeah. Well, well, you don't have to wait for them to be here. You can win another race, okay? Yeah, <laughs> that sounds pretty good. All right, let's talk about day number two. Uh, struggled a little bit compared to the first day, but you're still leading the point standings. You finished eighth. That was an epic race. I don't know how it was from your point of view, but for me, it was one of the best races I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, so in the first practice again, I think I was second again um, on day two. And then the first qualifying, I went to ride out onto the track and my, uh, my A bike actually developed a miss. Uh, the, it, it wouldn't run properly off the bottom. And so 
Um, I had to switch to my backup bike uh, from the second qualifying on all day. And I just didn't feel as comfortable on that bike as I did on my uh, A bike, which sucks. But, you know, it's racing. It's all part of the game. So, Henry Wiles earlier this week put on Instagram, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but he's already given you the best save of the year. It was only race number two. Uh, it looked like you lost the front end for a really long time, and you're going straight towards the wall. How did you save that? Yeah, so it all just happened really quick, and my front end was gone. As uh, I think someone commented, like it looked like 40 foot, and yeah, it, it was scary. Uh, and I, I honestly don't know how I saved it. Like as you can see, like both my legs are off, and like look full goon, but yeah, somehow I saved it before I hit the concrete wall, which is good because uh, that was coming up quick. <laughs> Full goon. I like that. <laughs> so let's talk about the tracks in Australia compared to here. You know, I've always been told they're loose tracks. You guys have a lot different size style, you know, size wheels and tires and stuff like that. How have you adapted to the, the race tracks up here in the United States? Yeah, it's tough. Um, the race tracks over here, there's more of a variety. Um, in Australia, they're all mainly loose, uh, deep, like sort of deeper tracks. And we have oil tracks as well. But, yeah, um, in Australia, we sort of run like a 21-inch motocross knobby front tyre and a 18-inch uh, trials tyre rear with full-height motocross suspension. So coming from back home to here, it's a massive uh, difference. But, you know, I'm starting to get used to it now and everything's you know, starting to work out, which is good. But, yeah, it took a long time to get used to the, uh, the slick clay track, that's for sure. So you've got the momentum now. I talked to you, you know, a few weeks ago up at Terre Haute, Indiana, at an all-star race. You were on the podium. What's turned around this year? Why are you so so much faster? Uh, I'm just I'm just a lot more confident this year. Um, my, I've stepped up my training a lot, um, more riding, everything really. Like my bikes are better. We took them home in the off season and um, got them to fit a lot better shape, really. And uh, yeah, just like worked out all the little like things and. But yeah, as I said, we, I feel really good this year uh, with like with everything, bike fitness, the, the bikes are good, and yeah, I feel like I'm good, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So your parents are in Australia, you're just traveling around like a gypsy in a motorhome, uh, where do you decide where to park and, and stay? Well, there's an old saying, home is where you park it, but <laughs> no, nah, uh, luckily I've been, uh, got some good friends, uh, I stayed at, uh, in Pennsylvania with... Um, like Briar and Shana for a while, um, Don and Aaron, Kissinger from Don's Kawasaki, Bronson and uh, the Camp family. And, and at the moment, I'm staying in uh, Mac Dumpter's house. Uh, I've been staying here for a bit now. But, yeah, it's, it's good, to have, uh, good to have them help me out, like, you know, just staying at their house. And i got a shop to work on my bikes in and stuff, which makes it a lot easier instead of doing it like at a Walmart car park or something. <laughs> So who yeah, does so work on your bikes? I know Matthew helps you out down there in Florida, Matthew Gunther, but who helps you out during the week to get ready for the next round? Um, if uh, through the week, the next round, it's mainly just me. Um, but like at the moment while I'm here, Matt's helped me out. But uh, yeah, most of the time it's just me through the week, um, just getting them ready for the next round or race or practice or, you know, the motorbike, like most of it all now. So, but yeah, it's good. I don't mind it. Um, I enjoy working on the bikes. So the schedule's out. There's still a couple of, you know, maybes, and there's some things up in the air. But what track are you looking forward to the most? Um, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, it's hard to say, but man, I was looking forward to Volusia. I like that track a lot. So um, when that got, and when that was on the schedule, I seen that. I was pretty pumped. Also looking forward to the Springfield races. You know, whatever it is, short track TT. I love it there. So. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm looking forward to those ones mainly. Are you gonna just stick to the American flat track races, or do you are you gonna try to race some other races just to stay sharp? Well, I try and do as many races as I can um, when uh, we're not racing at AFT. Uh, as many as I can, just to just stay sort of fresh. You know, I, I feel like the best uh, best like training, whatever you can do, is just like racing, riding. So I try and to do try and do as much of that as I can. All right. Before I let you go, last week at the Amateur Nationals, you were a corner worker, and when they prepped the track, you're out there driving a the tractor. Is there anything you can't do? Um, no, was, I actually enjoyed that. It was kind of fun. Um, dragging the track and prepping it was cool, but, man, flagging in turn one, it was pretty gnarly. It was good. That was yeah, where no. all the action was. Oh, yeah, it was. 
Well, cool, man. Next time I see you, I'm going to have to get one of those hats from you. You're going to be selling them, right? Yeah, yeah, that'll be for sale for sure. Sounds good. Hey, man, thanks for stopping by the show, and good luck the rest of the season. You're the current points leader, man. Soak it in and, and, and go win that championship. Oh, thank you very much, Scotty. It means a lot. Powering the winners of America's original extreme sport. E3 Diamond Fire technology maximizes the fuel burn for better fuel efficiency and more power. E3 Spark Plugs. What are you running? Welcome back to the AFT Show. That was it for our AFT Singles Riders. Now let's talk about some production twins. Our first guest is a third-generation flat tracker. Let's bring him in right now. The winner of night number one, Ryan Varnes. Ryan, welcome to the show. Hey, Scotty. Glad to be here today. Has it sunken in that you won down there in Volusia? Uh, a little bit, yeah. It, it kind of hasn't sunk in until maybe this week. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty crazy feeling to think about it and like reflect on that week to actually go out and win the first round of the year after waiting. I think it was over at least like 300 days or something like that since the last round. Um, so I was more than ready to get out there and, and, and start racing again. Talk about day number one, Friday. You had the pole. You had the win. But you didn't lead all the laps. You waited until the near the end to make the pass for the victory. Yeah, I wouldn't say that I uh, waited till the till the end on purpose, uh, sort of say. I mean, I was definitely on James for maybe the last 15, 10, 15 laps or so. And I just couldn't really find a way around him. He was just running a really solid line the whole day and um, wasn't really leaving too many gaps open for me. Like we, we both had our advantages and disadvantages. It seemed like he would get into the corner harder than me and gap me a little bit but then once I'd get uh like I'd go slower into the corner and <clears throat> I'd, I'd start making up uh more time in the middle of the corner where where um he wasn't as much and so like we just kind of like cat and mouse a little bit for a few laps here and there and there's no real openings for me so uh um that last lap I was I had got to run around the outside and I was like I just got to go for it like whether it sticks or not, you know, I don't, I don't want to be in second place the first night, especially running on him all night and uh, and ended up working out real good. Yeah, I, that outside line that you made work, I don't know how you did it. Back in March, there was an all-star race there. We saw Fisher go around Meese in that same spot. Did you know that you were going to be able to pull it back down in front of him? Uh, not really, but um, I was kind of surprised because I didn't really run there at all during the main. I was kind of just trying to stay in his rear wheel just as, as soon as he'd make a mistake, just zap him. But um, like I said, he was solid. And so when I went out there, I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know if it'd be greasy, if it'd be sticky or what. And it ended up being just enough grip that I could just shoot back uh, in front of him again once I was on the outside and just shut the door and uh, brought, it, brought it home. Like you said, it had been around 300 days. How, how did you – you maintain your your racing skill and did you practice did you train or how were you ready to go yeah i started uh training again um early january once i got back home um after christmas and uh kind of just kept to it and uh really just wanted to, to get after it this year i really wanted to go out and uh, really contend for a championship this year and i know uh what kind of held me up a little bit last year was my fitness um for sure so i just really wanted to like squash that bug and just uh just leave it out there for for uh, um, like my skills on the track and um, what the bike can do and stuff together and uh, not have to worry about fitness at all. So uh, early January, we started training again, and um, I've been riding a lot more here and there. I've been trying to do a lot of motocross and stuff. Um, I actually just went and motored yesterday in New Jersey. Um, it's That's something that I haven't done in, in probably five years or so is moto. It's kind of out of my element a little bit. Um, I don't like flying through the air too much. So like when we go to TTs, that's not my my cup of tea really. And um, but I'm trying to get better at it, trying to get better with right handers and stuff like that. So just trying to stay on a bike weekly and um, just training uh, mostly every day of the week. Um, but but yeah. Let's talk about day number two. You started fourth, but end up with 11th place finish. We talked about it after the race, but let's talk to the fans. What exactly went down during that main? Um, yeah, so during the main, um, didn't get the best of starts, uh, ended up like running fourth, I think for a lap or two and then get by Ben Low. Um, and then it was Corey and James, they were kind of, James was kind of on Corey and I ended up able to, was able to catch up to him again and kind of hug the back of James again, kind of like day one, but it was, 
I was on the backup bike for the main event. And I actually after for the semi too, I was on the backup and it just wasn't working just as good as that main bike was. Um, I don't know if it was, uh, ended up being suspension or what, but, uh, I just couldn't get into the corners as hard and as, as comfortable as I could the day before. I think that kind of set me apart a little bit. Um, I still was able to like catch up to him, but then kind of the same, uh, same issue occurred that, that happened on the first night. I just couldn't find a way around James. It's just so tight of racing evolution. It's usually like a one line track and it's just so hard. Like you really need someone to make a mistake in front of you. And I mean, us guys like running up front, it's, it's hard for us to make mistakes and, and, um, just things like that. Yeah. So yeah, we ended up breaking the second night. It was a, a huge bummer. We definitely had a podium secured and maybe, um, we're de- we're definitely knocking on the door to try and get second place and, uh, and end up leaving, um, the rounds one and two with the points lead, which would have been awesome, but, um, ended up breaking instead, which was a heartbreaker. So it's a, well, uh, we'll move on to the next one. Right on. So you're a third generation flat tracker, just like I am. Is there added pressure to keep flat tracking? And you, you know, you got your grandpa there, your dad's at most of the races too. Do you feel pressure from that? Or is it just really cool to be a part of that? Uh, I think it's more cool to be a part of it. I mean, I think my dad and my grandfather are definitely like pretty happy with me and where I'm at right now. Um, and I just want to keep racing at, at this point. I mean, um, I'm starting my senior year of college this year. So after that, I'll have my four year degree and everything and something to fall back on after racing if, if it doesn't pan, pan out. But um, uh, once I finish this year, I'd like to just focus completely on racing for at least one or two years and just see where I could get um, as far as that, because it's kind of like having two full-time jobs at the moment and um with traveling and uh, in school and racing and everything it's so hard um especially when you're like flying in and out and it's just a it's like a lot to me like I worry a lot sometimes and like school's definitely important to me and like having good grades and stuff so like where you're doing all this flying around and then just traveling and you're not at school and you're doing one or the other it's just, it's just like uh it's just it could be a lot so I, I'd love to just focus on racing for uh a few years after I'm, I'm done with school and see like what we really can do. And, um, yeah. Is that some of your dad's pictures right behind you? I see a number one plate behind there. Is that your dad's stuff? Yeah, actually it's, uh, one of the photos is him and, uh, I forget where it is. I think it was Springfield. You got Nikki Hayden up there. Jake Johnson's on the podium with him and, uh, my dad and, <clears throat> You got a, I think, yeah, I think it's from that same night and Nikki Hayden, I think coming around my, on the inside of my dad to pass him for the win. Um, and a Bubba Schobert number plate. Ooh. Back That's there. cool, man. Yeah. Do, do you remember going to the races as a kid and watching your dad race? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I wish I would remember it more because, um, like back then he was traveling around, around with like Johnny Goad and stuff and, and Babe DeMay and, he was on factory Suzuki at one point and uh, it, it would be cool to remember him like a lot more. And actually if I would have like paid attention to the racing more, like I think when I was there, I'd mostly just play around the pits like every other kid. So, uh, but it, it was, uh, it, it definitely be cool to remember all that a little bit more because he was definitely one of the front runners every week and you could definitely go out and win a, a national. Do you have any videos to go back and watch, you know, some of his races? Um, every now and then I see some, I mean, he doesn't like bring them up at all, really. Like every now and then, like he'll, he'll find some stuff. He's like, Oh, someone like, uh, showed me this old YouTube video or something. And, um, he'll show us the race and stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it, 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 you don't really see of it, see much of it too much. I don't know just because of, uh, like how they recorded it back in the day or what, but it'd be cool if I could go back and watch them all again. And especially on like the nights that he won and stuff, I think it'd be pretty cool. Absolutely. Well, we got the schedule started. We're we're racing. Are, is there one particular race that you're looking forward to the most? Um, I'd have to say Williams Grove, just because I won there last year, and it's the hometown track. I was just there this past weekend, actually watching the World of Outlaws Friday night. Um, it was pretty cool, just looking at the track again and being there, uh, back in that atmosphere with racing there. Um, that. And I'd say it'd be pretty close to between Charlotte, too. Um, I'm, I'm pretty excited Charlotte's back on the schedule this year. I got my first podium there. Um, I think that was 2015 or 16. I was on – uh, it was called the the GNC2 class back then on a, on a basic twin. 
and uh, I got my first podium there. So that was pretty cool. And I, I just like the layout of the track and everything like these clay half miles on the schedule. They really, um, they really work for me in a way. It's kind of my cup of tea once we go to a clay half mile track. So kind of look excited for those two rounds the most. Sounds good. Well, thanks for coming on the show, man. We appreciate it. Hey, thank you, Scotty. Glad to be here. We'll be right back after a word from E3 Spark Plugs. Powering the winners of America's original extreme sport. E3 Diamond Fire technology maximizes the fuel burn for better fuel efficiency and more power. E3 Spark Plugs. What are you running? Welcome back to the AFT Show. Last year, the champ was Corey Texter, and he got on the podium three times, and already this season in weekend number one, he's been up on the podium twice with one win. Let's bring him in, your 2019 Production Twins champion, Corey Texter. Hey, Corey, thanks for stopping by the AFT Show. What's up, Scotty? Thanks for having me. Not much. Just talk about Volusia. I mean, has it sunk in yet? You had a great weekend, but uh, I really want to talk about day number one first. Yeah, yeah sunk in i guess i'm glad uh i'm glad we got the first race over and we're moving on to the rest of the season you know daytona in the past it's always been a tough one because it's the season opener so it was kind of the same vibes for volusia you know it's been so long since we've raced and we didn't know where we were with the bikes or how i was with my riding and things like that so i'm glad it's over the first day it was was tough we had a few things we were working through we had a new frame that we were trying to dial in just uh, a lot of things that were a little off on that first day, so it was definitely a challenge for me. Even though you had the challenges, you still finished third. I, I talked to you, you weren't happy with third place. <laughs> no, I, I was okay necessarily with third place, but I was kind of, I kind of, I stacked myself up against myself every race, and I just knew I was a little off on Friday. So it wasn't necessarily, I mean, obviously I, I feel, I feel if I'm riding my best, I can go out there and I can win races. So. I obviously wanted to win on Friday, but it was more so how off I felt with my, myself, really. So a win, a third, a fifth, a tenth, it was more so just getting to 100% with me and the bike. And I just felt we were just a little off Friday. I, no matter what I did, I was a few tenths off of where I wanted to be. And we just couldn't get the bike to where I was 100% comfortable with it. So we were working through all those issues. And if a bad day for me is a third place, you know, it was a solid third place finish. So can't be too mad about that, but I just knew we could do better. So that was kind of why I was disappointed. Just, I feel like we left a lot on the table. Do you think it's because there were so many days off or do you think it's because you're focusing on the new motorcycle? We were just struggling getting the bike dialed in really. I mean, we just could not figure out how to get traction on that motorcycle. So I felt good going into Volusia. I, I'm I'm as confident as I've ever been. I've been riding really well. I was excited. My fitness is really good. There was nothing more that I could have done as a rider to prepare for the season opener. So there's no regrets on anything I've done. You know, I've I've been riding a lot and I was ready to go. It's just I haven't rode those Yamahas since Meadowlands last year. My team's based out of California. So I've been riding, but I've been riding my own bikes. So it was just it was just tough to get out there. You know, the guys I'm racing with for a championship, they've been riding their bikes all year and testing. And, and we were kind of just playing catch up on Friday. It was just tough with a new frame and things like that. So I think it was just working through a new bike and a new chassis and, and just getting, getting used to those bikes again. So Saturday was a new day. You went out there and won it. What did you learn from Friday that carried over to the next day? Man, I don't. I don't know. I just I just knew we were struggling and Saturday we, we, we started off struggling again the first practice and honestly more than anything else the track came to me. It got a lot more grip in it on Saturday. You know, I I could say I rode better or the bike was better, but in all honesty, the track came to me more than anything else. Like I definitely rode better. There were some things I jotted down on a notebook after Friday, you know, that I, I could do better. Regardless of what the bike does, I feel like I can always ride better. So there was things I, I did better Saturday. I, I executed a better race. I was more aggressive and just more confident with the day. You know, I went there Saturday with a purpose and I wasn't leaving without winning that race. So um, I was just a lot more confident in myself. And it, it, a lot of people wrote me off before the weekend even started or even after Friday. It was like, you know, it was a lot of hype with some of the other guys I'm racing with. And I'm not going to go down without a fight. You know, I worked my whole life to put that number one plate on my bikes and 
I'm going to work just as hard to keep them there, if not harder. That's was that's leading right into my next question. You have that number one plate. It's on your back. Are you a target now? I don't know. I I, I would think so. I I feel like I'm. I've always been a target in my career for whatever that for whatever reason. Like you know, I just I'm in the spotlight a lot. I, I speak my mind and I try to market myself really well. So I think maybe there's a target, but you know, I, I know a lot of the guys I'm racing with. They they want to win that number one plate and. And yeah, like going into even this season, you know, I feel feel like I had a pretty solid year last year. You know, I didn't win. I won the first three races and then I kind of, you know, maintained the points a little too much last year and I didn't really ride as well as I would have liked. And to, to win another race, it was really nice. You know, I felt like last year at the Meadowlands, I think I could have won that one and we had a mechanical failure. So to get back on top of the box and just prove that I, I can still win, you know, I'm, I'm getting older. So everyone likes to you know, say, oh, he's losing his touch or whatever. But I feel like I'm getting better and I'm getting stronger. So, um, yeah, there's maybe a little bit of a target, but I, I place all the pressure on myself. Like if I can go out and just be myself and ride to my potential, I'm not worried about who's got a target, you know, or what they're chasing after. I'm just trying to be the, the best version of me and let let them guys kind of battle, battle, you know, do their own thing. So do you think the track really fits your style? <laughs> I mean, Jared Meese said it was the fastest track besides the Springfield Mile he's ever ridden on. Did that is that what that suits your style? Um, I guess so. I, I don't. I like to think that I, my style fits every track. This is just, just the racer in me. I got to try to adapt and and like every track I go to. But that second day, there was just a point a point in time the, during the afternoon. I think I actually saw Shayna. I think she fast timed one of her qualifying sessions. And we have similar riding styles and similar likes, you know, with tracks and things like that. And when I looked at the times and she fast timed because she was struggling all week, too. I'm like, all right, it's game time. Like, let's let's start moving in a forward direction. And and then I felt after the semi, I won my semi. I felt really good. I was like, man, this is my this is my track to lose. I mean, if I don't execute this and get the job done, I'm going to be really disappointed because it's it's right up my alley. It was a fast clay half mile. There was traction and. Yeah, I guess you could say that it fit my style more than Friday did because Friday was a little skittery and trying to find traction. So moving forward, we got to try and get stronger on tracks that that are a little bit skittery and don't have all that traction. Sounds good. Before we let you go, let's talk about last week was the 2020 AMA Flat Track Grand Championships. You had eight riders. You went out there, got sponsors for them. How do you think the week turned it up for you? Yeah, the. The CTR amateur team, the amateur nationals, that's one of my favorite things I do all year, you know, between promoting races and my own program. I really take a lot of joy in helping those amateurs and the families get to that event. And I think we had 21 wins and 43 podiums, five overall championships. So my team did really well from a result standpoint, but more so they were professionals on and off the track all week long. You know, the, the kids were hanging out, you know, the, my one rider, he won the race the last day of the event. He won for the third row. And then he, he gave one of my other teammates the victory lap. And that's just, you can't teach that man, just the sportsmanship and how well they work together and the professional attitudes they showed off the track. I take a lot more pride in that than I do winning races. So kudos to all the riders and the families for the amateur nationals and, you know, I think we're going to be really good for years to come with that program. You know, next year, Chase Sadhoff will be going for the Horizon Award. And Evan Renshaw will have another year on the 250s. He'll get stronger. Travis Horn will move up to the 250s. Brody Hansen, all those riders, Bud Mann, Ryder Reese, Aiden Brown, Logan McGrain, they're going to keep getting stronger. So as you can see, I take a lot of pride in my, uh, my, my amateur guys. And yeah, it was a good week. I was excited for them. I wish I was there. I wish I could have been there. That's awesome. Thanks for stopping by the AFT show. Congratulations on a great uh, opening weekend down there in Volusia, and we'll see you soon. Yeah, thank you, guys. It was a really good run event. AFT did a great job, so uh, I'm really appreciative we were able to get back to racing, and uh, thank you guys for, for, for getting it done. 
What a great show we had here tonight. The AFT show was awesome. We had four writers. We got to hear Jeffrey Carver's side of the story about what happened down in Volusia. We talked to Max Whale with his first win of the season. We talked to both the production twins winners. Man, it was awesome to catch up with all of the winners from the first two rounds of the American Flat Track season. Don't forget, tune in next week. We'll have some more riders lined up for the show. We're getting closer and closer to our next round. We can't wait to get some more racing on the track. And remember to go to Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold for live AFT coverage. Coverage all season long. It's less than a dollar a race or so. Come on, tune in. Stay tuned. Watch all the racing here on American Flat Track. I'm Scotty Dubler. We'll talk to you guys next week. Powering the winners of America's original extreme sport. E3 Diamond Fire technology maximizes the fuel burn for better fuel efficiency and more power. E3 spark plugs. What are you running? Over 130 miles per hour, I love it.